Recently, I've been talking to more and more people. If you live around here, you probably know that for sure. And uh, of course, we are always talking, but maybe we talk in circles. In other words, we're telling old stories or, or uh, comparing our thoughts on the news or uh, uh, talking about uh, the current events and, uh, and what holds us back. So usually that has to do with a virus. So these, so anyhow, uh, I'm also trying to talk with myself. So uh, in that sense, I'm not an avid reader, but uh, I do follow my curiosity and uh, read different things. And when I see something that really hits me, that this could could really be important, or is really important, if you just take it. Okay, well, I go with it. So, uh, just in December of last year, I read uh, a Stoic philosophy book, uh, The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Um, for me, they're contemplations, not meditations, but uh, uh, I think the translator uh, coined the title, uh, Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor, and uh, he supposedly, they say he wrote these things as reminders for himself, not for a book or not to have a title. Okay, uh, so I uh, wanted to read it again and again, so I thought, okay, well, I'll just put it in a, in a book template and edit it, and then I printed it, and then uh, I kept looking at the printed copy and print some more, and uh, of course I had these copies, so then I gave them out. So then I've given out maybe 30 books. And it's a subject of uh, uh, discussion. It's a different subject, and uh, maybe not many people want to really go deeply into it, but uh, it's there, and I've been kind of uh, coming back to it. And. Uh, what I want to do is make a video about uh, what I think is important. And uh, I made the first video and got some feedback on it, and I, uh, I realized that people misunderstand me. Uh, uh, they understand the book, they understand me from where they're coming from, but they don't understand where I'm coming from, and uh, that's what I want to clarify today. And uh, so, uh, Looking at the video, people were kind enough to give feedback, and uh, from the feedback I realized, well, they suggested that I uh, could study uh, Stoic philosophy. There's so many, uh, and they suggested uh, resources and where to go, and, and uh, actually that's the last thing on my mind, to study uh, Stoic philosophy. Uh, what I find in this book is complete in, in of itself, and uh, that's what I want to explain. And uh, so, uh, I like to ask questions. Now, some people find that annoying because they think, oh, well, why are you asking uh, about what I believe? Uh, well, I'm not really, it, don't take it personal. It's uh, just my process of uh, looking into myself. And uh, so if you ask some good questions, uh, uh, maybe you'll get some new answers. If you ask some old questions, you'll go around and around in circles. And if you look at the world, uh, worldwide, we're asking old questions when we're going around and around in circles. And apparently those old questions are to somebody's advantage and then they're to a lot of people's disadvantage. And uh, the somebody who has an advantage by asking those same questions, uh, hey, just tell the truth, uh, they got more power and they lead us where they want to lead us. But anyhow, uh, the question I want to ask right now to you is how do we learn? How do we mature? How do we grow? How does our uh, awareness uh, increase? And uh, our, as a human species, our, what differentiates us is our our uh, awareness, our self-awareness. And uh, perhaps it's a myth, but uh, mankind says that that awareness is growing. 
And uh, just go back from uh, Darwin said when the first humans evolved, uh, consciousness was animal nature. So now, after thousands of years, we're in some kind of human nature. Then other people that have a spiritual bent or some kind of foresight will say, well, we're heading toward divine nature. So uh, now there's a path laid out. So my question is, how do, we, how do we grow? How do we expand? Why are we heading for this divine nature? Is it something that we do? Is it something that's just part of being a human? Is it something the cosmos is doing to us? Is there actually a God that's, uh, that's lifting us up? So uh, that's my question. And uh, if you ask a billion people, it's many billion, They'll tell you, well, the way it works is that uh, God, God sends a messenger. There's a sage. There's a seer. There's a prophet. There's a, there's a Buddha. There's a Mahavir. There's a Jesus. Uh, there's an anointed being. And they bring the message of God. And then uh, we build institutions around that, and those institutions will coax us or enforce, <laughs> depending, well, they used to burn you at the stake, but uh, now they have other methods, I suppose. Uh, and that's how we learn. So then, my que I don't know if that's true. I mean, the empirical evidence is out there, like billions of, of uh, experiences saying that's how it, how it works and that's how it should work. But yet, we don't know if it's just also happening inside. Is that just part of being a human? Is that part of our own uh, self-consciousness that we can uh, look into ourself and be aware of ourself and, uh, and examine, with introspection, examine our, uh, our thoughts and ideas and see how they link up to our behaviors and see how they link up to uh, an emotionality and see where that emotionality drives us. And then, uh, of course, we've got ideas that are laid upon us, and so we can attach the emotionality to those other ideas and saying, oh, we're the victim, and uh, that other nation there is uh, our oppressor. And uh, perhaps they are. And, uh, but what I want to look at is how would I get deeper into uh, a process that I could call my own process, my own unfolding. And uh, certainly uh, I'm totally immersed in, uh, in the other process, the, uh, the external process, so I don't have to really worry about increasing that. And uh, I just want to look into this internal process and see if it's something that can, can give back to me. And how do I do it? Well, I have to do it without proof. Because uh, there's, I don't know any way to prove it, or I don't think there is a way. And so without proof, I have to call it an experiment. I'm going to make an experiment in the laboratory of my own being. And uh, I'm uh, going to ignite this experiment and ignite this process and ignite this introspection and uh, uh, teach myself to look at my own thoughts. Okay. Let's just say the obvious, like, how would we ever grow? How would uh, consciousness rise? How would uh, consciousness ever expand? Well, something different has to happen. So whatever we think, whatever we believe, it's got to change. And to think that, oh, we're going to grow on top of everything we know now, because what we know now is stand pat. and. Uh, uh, we're all uh, correct that this is how it is and from here we'll grow. No, no, you're not going to grow from here. You've got to discard what doesn't work. And uh, you've got to determine uh, what is going to work better. And uh, you've got to see things from uh, other people's point of view. Uh, uh, because we're in a society, in a world society, where uh, everybody has their needs. And if they're being fulfilled, uh, uh, everybody can live in harmony. But if they're not being fulfilled, I think it's pretty clear that there's going to be uh, aggressive, aggressive behavior. There's going to be uh, uh, problems. So that things have to change. 
So are we willing to look at the way we do things and say, hey, maybe I can give this away or maybe I can uh, put this aside or maybe I can investigate it or maybe I can listen to the other guy and see uh, what they want to do. So uh, I would call that an axiom, something that we don't really prove but is the basis of all our thought. You know, the axiom that I'm questioning is how do we learn? Oh, there's a teacher. You got to go to a teacher. Uh, you got to go to a university. Okay, so I'm challenging that axiom. And, uh, uh, okay, let's get back to the book. So the book is uh, Stoic Philosophy. Philosophy is very simple. It's just how do ideas affect your life? And then uh, if philosophy comes up with wisdom, wisdom is also very simple. It's just uh, uh, what works. In these ideas, uh, generate this behavior, generate these emotions. Uh, does that make uh, life on earth uh, better? Does that make your own personal life better? Uh, are you more satisfied? Are you uh, more at ease? Are you more safe? Are you uh, uh, more friendly? Are you uh, more curious? Are you uh, full of wonder about, the, uh, about, about life, about nature, about uh, the planet Earth that we live on, about uh, the things we might be doing to it that are very damaging and that how we could do something different? Okay. Uh, so that's a philosophy. Uh, the philosophy. The book is written as aphorisms. So it's not a story that unfolds. It's not a handbook or a rule book. It's, a, it's bits of wisdom. And these bits of wisdom are behaviors. And these behaviors are said to make things run smoothly. And so then let's call these behaviors morality. Okay, it's said that the human instrument, it's not very good at just seeing things as they are, but it's quite good at seeing the difference between uh, something is here and then something is there. Oh, I could, I could tell right away that that's different. Okay. So it's very difficult for me just to see how I am. But if I hold up these aphorisms, these uh, bits of morality, then I can compare and I can say, oh, yeah, I'm not quite that good. Or, Oh, well, that's not practical nowadays. Or, uh, you know, oh, this guy was a king. He was a Caesar. He could do whatever he wanted, but I can't do that. Or, uh, you know, or, you know, you might look at it and say, yeah, right, I could be a little bit nicer to some people around me. I could just change my attitude about uh, certain events that irritate me so much. And uh, so then by looking at a standard, I'm able to measure. So that's a big value of this book. Okay, even more of a value is it gives you a focus because it says over and over again, uh, you know, changing your own opinions, who's going to stop you? You know, you, you stop yourself because you say, oh, well, I'm not going to change my opinions, they're all true, so I'm not going to hold any false opinions. Well, lucky you. So that uh, you're 100% facilitated to change your opinions. Opinions are your judgment points and what you think is just and unjust and uh, how you think the other should behave and how you, what your expectations are of life and, and of uh, relationships. And uh, these things you can change. And uh, if we uh, ask somebody, well, what, you know, how's life? You know, is everything the way you want it? No, we want to change a few things. Well, what do you want to change? Well, my family's like this. My house needs this. Uh, well, the streets are broken and, uh, you know, the government, oh, the mayor is always uh, trying to spend money on the wrong thing. Look, you're trying to change the outside all the time. So that's going to be like, I can't tell you how to change the outside. Maybe you can and maybe you can't. Maybe you can make uh, an effort with, uh, uh, with your friends or with your, uh, with your, your village and uh, get together. But anyhow, that's where you have a very, very low facilitation. But changing yourself is what you have 100% uh, facility in doing. 
But the funny thing is, is if I ask you, well, you know, do you want to change your amount? Change myself? No. I'm okay. I don't need to change myself. Well, others think you should change. Well, that's another story. Okay, that's the focus you get out of this book. You're, not do, you're ignoring what you can do, and you're focusing totally on what you can't do. Okay, then the other great part about these writings, repeated again and again, it says that nothing external will touch your state of mind, not touch it. That nobody's got power over your state of mind. Nobody and nothing. And the only thing that has power over your state of mind are your judgment points, your opinions, your sense of justice. And when you feel it's wrong, then what happens? Just the way that the human mind works, I think you know you have your own version. Uh, if something is wrong, you feel bad. And emotion is what is supposed to be the driver. But is emotion the best driver or the best focal point? Uh, I say no, because it throws you off balance and it's all constructed on, uh, on hearsay, on your own uh, belief structure, on wherever it comes from, but it's certainly not yours, on borrowed thought. So then uh, it comes from your uh, childhood trauma or it comes from your father's childhood trauma. It just goes way back. And it's these axioms also that uh, are hidden. Like, you, like if I believe the only way I can learn is, is by having a teacher, then I'm always uh, focused outside, looking out, driving out. Who's going to tell me what to do? Reading all these books, self-help, da, da, da. And I'm never getting in my own process. So I, I have no ownership on anything. Because it's all something someone's laying on my head and saying, oh, do this, do that, directives. Uh, so nothing can touch your state of mind except your own opinions. So why don't you change that opinion? Oh, gee, I don't know. Maybe I never thought about it. Maybe I, you know, I know I could change my opinion, but I thought I would be going downhill, getting worse off, accepting a... Uh, all this transgression against me. It's an experiment. So then I hope that clears up where I'm coming from because I'm not looking to the outside and I'm not denying it. I, there's enough outside already. It's all around me. I don't need any more. And I don't, you know, but I do have to shield myself up to a point because I need to keep a certain amount of time to be in my own process, to examine my own thoughts, to question. Why do I do this? And why does everyone do that? Everyone around me? And uh, where does it come from? And uh, do I want to re-choose it? Do I, wanna, do I wanna be the author of some of these things or do I just wanna be the uh, actor, uh, the puppet? And uh, so, I suppose I could get emotional about that, you know, but... <laughs> That's what I'm suggesting. Your own process is important and uh, it's powerful. And uh, check it out, see what it will do. And uh, what else can I say? Oh, about the book, I put it right down there in the description. There's a linkage to uh, download uh, my edited copy and you'll ha have a PDF so then you can see for yourself. Just look at it. You get uh, uh, morality that you can, pick, can compare with and you get a few directives on your uh, focus and you also get some insight that uh, you have the power. You have the full power to control your state of mind. And uh, with that peace of mind, with that equanimity, there's quietness because you don't need a lot of stray thoughts. You're not always fighting something. And uh, all those thoughts are noise, and uh, with less noise, you can hear, you can see, you can uh, perceive what's happening, what the universe is all about, what the opportunities are in this moment. Because right now, today, there's opportunity. My opportunity is to talk to you, and I've got this camera up here, and I'm doing it. 
And uh, so then uh, your opportunity tomorrow is to write me a comment or say, hey, I don't get it. <laughs> why, why, are you pay, why are you pulling on my chain? <laughs> I, I think I explained it. Okay, that's enough for today.